What up guys, Squishy Spud here, and today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the pros and cons to paid DLC and microtransactions. Uh, now I know many of you are thinking, pros? What could possibly be a pro of paying extra money for content? And technically, you'd be right. But uh, hopefully after this video, you'll look at paid DLC and microtransactions a little differently. So let's do this. First, we'll take a look at the mostly obvious cons, the first being price. Paid DLC and microtransactions tend to start making games a lot more expensive. You start off with your standard $59.99 for the base game, then maybe tack on an extra $10 for the special edition, giving you some extra weapon, camos, armor, maybe some time with extra XP, then maybe even extra $30 to $40 for the season pass, hoping that in the end the DLC will be worth it, making your new grand total about $100 or so. Then all of a sudden you find out that they've added some new weapons, but they're locked behind some kind of loot system. No big deal. The in-game currency should take care of that. But this is where microtransactions rear their ugly head. They make the earnings so low and the drop rate so rare that you have to put in ridiculous amounts of time on the off chance that you'll get something cool to drop. But hey, for a few real life dollars, you can buy the in-game currency. It's so much faster. But with the drop rates being so astronomically low, you'll spend tons of real-life cash just trying to unlock all the latest gear. I'm looking at you, Activision. After spending 100 bucks on a game, they like to call the Ultimate Edition or the Complete Edition or whatever other words they can find that makes you think you're getting everything, you realize that there's more, and it's going to cost you. Microtransactions can very often create a pay-to-win environment, in an effort to create longevity for a game, the in-game currency is made to drop at a low rate, as I stated earlier. For those who choose not to make in-game purchases, this can put them at a huge disadvantage. Most smart businesses are not going to give you the creme de la creme at the beginning, they're going to make you wait to unlock them later, making it some kind of reward. Sadly, in this same environment where someone can just come along and make an in-game purchase to unlock that weapon puts them at a huge advantage over the others. Add in the loot system, and there's a chance that most players won't even unlock the item at all. This was definitely the case starting with me with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and Activision just kept on rolling with it. Now, I'm not sure how many of you feel about that, but having in-game purchases for supply drops for a random chance of getting something you really want... Kinda sounds like gambling. But by far the biggest con in my opinion though, is how paid DLC divides the player base into the haves and the have-nots. Do you have the latest maps in Battlefield, but your buddy in the party doesn't? Enjoy playing on the old maps. Or even just simply having a smaller chance of getting into a game with the new maps, because a great many players don't purchase the DLC, making the pool of players with the older maps much larger. I think a great many developers can take a page from Ubisoft's book on how they've been handling DLC as of late. If you take Rainbow Six Siege and For Honor for example, all new maps and characters are free. For those who purchase the Season Pass, you'll get early access and the new characters are unlocked ready to play by default. For those who purchase the base game, you just have to use in-game currency and it's not, actually not that ridiculous to earn. Or you can visit the in-game store and buy the in-game currency with real money. Well, nobody's perfect. Well, let's take a look at some of the pros. Giving developers the ability to make money after the game's release can further entice them to push out new content. And whether it's free or paid DLC, more content for your favorite games is almost always a plus. Just as long as they don't try to hide the real ending behind a paywall. Another plus is allowing players to make in-game purchases to unlock items otherwise unlocked while grinding. This allows those who have limited time to stay relevant. As someone who many of you know recently I had a baby, I find a huge lack of time to sit and grind for loot. Now whenever I have time to play, I want to just enjoy the games. I don't want to have to run the same missions over and over just to level up and unlock and get to the same point everybody else is, just to get left behind again. But lastly, the biggest pro of all is price. Yeah, I know it's funny how price was also a con. But if you look at the trend in games, they tend to have actually gone down in price. Do a quick Google search and you'll see that most new Nintendo 64 games were about $49.99. Uh, 20 years ago, that's comparable to almost $70. But AAA titles right now start at $59.99. So if DLC and microtransactions are done right, they've given developers a way to make 
these hugely innovative and amazing games without actually raising the price. Just remember the AAA titles cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. For example, GTA V had a budget of $265 million, way more than games 20 years ago. Well, I hope this video gave you something to think about. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions. Who knows? Maybe you changed my mind. But until then, peace out, guys.